Kwaiti. Um, my, I come from Botswana. I'm an art educator, a practicing visual artist that's um, more into conceptual art. I do performance art and I do performance art and installation art mostly, but I'm, a, I'm also a printmaker and a painter. So I've been very privileged by getting in some form of art education that I become, I ended up becoming versatile, like being able to do this and that, very privileged. Um, I also do a lot of social responsibility projects as I have programs that I do with my, I, I teach blind students where I am. I'm an art therapist. So I have an opportunity to continue with the students even beyond their school days. That is when they go out of school, I can follow them up and still mentor them. I mentor a lot of upcoming artists as well. So it actually helps me to be on my feet now and then because I, on weekends I have a lot of um, starting up artists who come to my aid, who they would come to my studio and then we interact, I guide them in their journey in the arts. I also do, oh, let me say I have done sessions with the mentally challenged in my community through the authorities uh, where they were put together in one place to come and to try to keep and the issue of them roaming the streets or being seen in, you know, very unusual spaces. So they would be put on one space and then I would teach them craft. And I realized it's very helpful because most of them, you know, they would come or start the program being very agitated, uncontrollable and all that. But at the end of the, pro the program, we do like three months each program. At the end of the program, you have, you see them becoming more stable, more cooperative. So it's one of the projects that I really, that is very close to my heart and I would really continue to get funding and progress with going forward. Um, I have, I'd also do sessions with the Baylor Clinic Oncology, Oncology what in one of the, uh, local hospitals where I have art therapy sessions with young kids, like where I just pop in and we do art, process, uh, 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 art exercises. And it's one of the, the programs which are very close to my heart because you go there, you find these kids who are looking helpless. And once you bring your art materials out and you give them materials to work, you know, they become all bubbly and forget about all their problems. Um, I'm also an art curator and an aspiring writer. So all these actually are revolved, I think, come from my passion as an artist. Um, going forward, can we go forward? Yes, please. Please. Okay. Um, maybe addressing the question which says, how do you define arts education? Um, I would start off by just saying that arts education is very broad. So my definition may probably be different from how somebody else would define it. But I see art education as a system that offers a wide range of creative and comprehensive artistic disciplines, such as, you know, our visual arts, performing arts, as well as literary arts. You know, anything that offers that, you know, a, a discipline in line with the three I have um, mentioned is what I can call art education. And then your visual arts here would be things or activities or disciplines like painting, your sculptures, your printmaking, your photography. The performing arts here would be music, you would be dance, would be puppetry, etc., etc. And literary arts 
would be poetry, script writing, no novel writing, and a lot others that I did not mention. Maybe come back to the point where I said I'm a performance artist. Um, I said I'm a visual artist, but I'm a performance artist. Performance artist, not as a performing artist, not in the performing artist side, in the visual artist side, where now you engage your body and mind into, you know, painting or drawing without using the traditional painting tools and materials, but maybe using your body or using things that you can, you know, your mind, things that you can visualize, things that you can, you know, that are bothering you and stuff like that. That's what I wanted to do to just differentiate the two. And then all the three that I mentioned, the performing arts, the visual arts, and the literary arts, they can be offered in schools as part of the everyday school curriculum. Um, at times, you know, they are even offered as extracurricular activities. They don't necessarily have to be offered only in a classroom setting. So they can be offered like that as extracurricular activities or as an out of school activity, or some people even take it as, you know, a leisure project. You know, when during my spare time, I want to do this, but there's learning involved. So it becomes an informal curriculum. So when you do it that way, or you do it in a classroom, you do it in some an established artist uh, studio, or somebody's backyard, it's still education because at the end of the day, you are learning. So it doesn't confine you just to a classroom setting. Um, what I like about art education is that it affords somebody a chance to explore the world deeper. You know, I even say better than math and science. Because math and science a science focuses on a definite answer. But with art, you have to have a million answers for one plus one. When one plus one doesn't become only two, then it makes you, you know, broaden your mind. It broadens somebody else's mind who is actually looking at you. So when somebody gets that chance to explore further and deeper, you know, your life experiences also change. You know, you become a better person and you view life in a very unique way. That is what art education does. So I take it, I take art as a subject that, you know, is, or as a learning stimulant, let me say, it stimulates your thinking and it awakens those traits that are beneficial in one's journey, in a learner's journey as an, maybe an artist, or even if they divert from art, for the fact that they have learned art, they become very creative in their learning. It also fuels a very positive learning culture into learners, because just across the curriculum, you know, an art student actually does math with uh, mathematics or science or geography or whatever subject with with a broad mind you know they don't want to dwell on just one um answer or concept that the teacher had given to them they want to explore more they want to dig deeper and learn more so that's what art does and interestingly as i mentioned earlier also you know, you can carry art outside the classroom and that paves the way or gives the learners on an opportunity to carve a career out of the arts. You know, you, you, you don't, most of us went into a classroom and found, you know, a niche and a, an opportunity to take art even outside the classroom. You know, you, you make it a career opportunity outside your teaching career. You, you, you actually have other opportunities to earn a living with your art.
like I said, you know, with performing arts, you now step out of your traditional art making processes and, you know, you take your concepts and internalize them. So say if you go into a hospital, say you visit a student or maybe a, a clinic or a hospital ward where you have say cancer or high blood pressure or whatever disease that they are suffering from, you know, you go in there, this time around you are not giving them you're not giving them paints and paper and canvas and brushes to draw or to paint their emotions. The first thing you do probably is to talk about their disease. Just educate them more about what they are going through. You know, you have to be very well conversant with who you are talking to, with who you are working with. And then once you understand the, 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 the disease or the condition, then that's when you can talk to the person about them. And, you know, this time around, use yourself as the artist. You know, be the disease mm -hmm. and allow the, 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 the patient to experience you as the disease that is bothering them. And once they experience you, you know, they now in a way become aware of what is happening. You know, at times as patients, you know, they only wait for the doctor or the nurse to come and give them their medication. She goes away and doesn't tell them much about what they are going through and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. once you engage them and you become the disease yourself and then you allow yourself to, you know, you or rather allow the, the, the patient to reflect and internalize what the disease can do to them. You know, in a way you are giving them hope, you are uh, showing them that, okay, there's another way in which you can handle this condition. But once, you know, you engage yourself and you become Mm -hmm. whatever it is bothering somebody then it eases the pain it actually opens up that person's mind and says okay I can handle this at times art, uh, we are not saying as art therapists we don't say art heals completely but you know it actually eases some difficulties some heaviness you are carrying because of the condition you are facing um, nowadays, a lot of people are talking about, um, you know, social ills, you know, we're talking about other things that, you know, mental, yeah. mental health and stuff like that, which bothers. But once we had tackle this, not in a clinic or doctors, the, the way a doctor would, then you tell this person that I can handle this even outside the hospital. And then she's able to go home and deal with this condition without all the time thinking about when is the doctor coming? When am I getting my medication? When am I going for my next appointment? You know, you kind of engage them such that, you know, it becomes a regular part of what they do in their day-to-day -day life, as well as learn about their conditions. Mm -hmm. What are the most valuable dimensions of art education in your region? I actually took the case of my country, Botswana, because that's, okay, I've been teaching for the past 25 years now, and I guess I now know exactly what's happening in the country uh, with regards to issues of art education and what it has done for the country. So, I like the fact that art education provides it provides this creative platforms, you know, that allows for the practice of art or art practice to promote creativity and distinguish each one of us as artists from each other. You know, something interesting about arts is you become yourself, you know. 
you may go to the same class and be taught the same things. But once you leave the classroom, you become yourself and you become very unique. Um, it's very rare, like to people who take arts education seriously to, you know, continue their journey as an artist the same way they were taught. You know, you, you just detach yourself so that you are different, you know, so that you offer the world something that has not been there. That's one interesting aspect or oh, dimension about us education. The other thing is where, you know, cultural differences, academic influences, societal influences, and integration, they, when, when they do not, do not cause any barriers in you going further as an artist. You know, you, you are in Botswana, but you can go to South Africa and still be the best of yourself. You can go anywhere in the world and still be the, the, the best artist ever because you are being yourself. You are because you are not allowing your academic influences or your cultural differences to deter you from being different and from offering the world something that is completely different from what everybody is, is offering. And then a very interesting one here with the dimensions of art education, especially with us in Botswana, is you know the issue of infusing storytelling as a measure vehicle to relate and teach our oral traditions, and as they are passed from generations to generations. You know, we take. Our tra oral traditions, may, most of them were never documented. So, you, you know, you had to learn from your mother to your, from your grandmother to from your uncle. And then it, it becomes a culture. In a family, you know that if I need to know about this type of tradition, which makes me who I am, then I have a teacher in my mother who can actually teach me this sense, who can, and then I know I have to teach my daughters the same. And okay, maybe even refer my daughters to my grandmom or to my mom to, so that they can teach them the other things that maybe I'm not very well conversant in. So the story part, storytelling part is a very important aspect or dimension in our arts curriculum. Uh, be it music, dance, everywhere, you know, you know, there's always, we also even have cultural festivals which celebrate this. You, we have Languages Day, which celebrates the different dying languages which are no longer spoken because of maybe civilization or globalization and stuff like that. And then the other thing, the other dimension that art education does is you know, the teaching of, or maybe not teaching per se, but sensitizing people of emerging issues in society. Say there's something that is bothering your society, and then you find artists that would put that in a song. And, you know, that thing would actually go out and reach a, a, a larger audience. Or artists would have an exhibition and you would spot four or five paintings or artworks that talks about whatever issue it is. So it's one of the things that are actually keeping us going and keeping our education system vibrant. Um, we also have art therapy and social responsibility in my country, where now we see artists going into hospitals, going into prisons, going to homes, going to orphanages, and taking their services there. So it's one of the things that actually helps us reach out and be known as artists here. And then one other thing that I know is that it cultivates, you know, a sense of leadership in amongst practitioners. Because once you are a leader, now you have to talk to people. You have to, you know, guide somebody, then you become a leader. It helps again, 
it helps one to get involved in community development because if I'm in a small community, I stay in a small community, they will know that there is an artist in a particular area and when they need services, they will come to you. And then it helps again, like through exhibitions, through interaction with other artists, you build, you build business linkages. You know, you, you don't just become an IT, artist in isolation. You know, I have a curator who can curate my show better than I can do. Or, you know, you have somebody else where another artist who has, uh, who has contacts of, you know, collectors who can come and buy my work. And then you become this, just this one global village and it helps us grow as artists. And then we also have a very focused arts practice because in Botswana, because we are supported by government. There's government intervention everywhere. The youth, they all usually get grants. They are given money or borrowed money to start up their arts businesses or to support their arts businesses. Or you even, even if you are not a youth, you would get even um, funding for any emerging, emerging business. You can apply for funding and be aided. I know I'm mentioning this, I'm not saying the government is doing enough, but we are grateful that at least we have people who are benefiting from it as well. Um, lastly, the question was, can you describe a good example about art education in your region? You know, I love the fact that it encourages inclusivity, inclusivity in the classroom, you know, where learners both with us, where we have learners who have special needs, um, mixing with mainstream learners in one classroom. And you know, you are not saying to the learners with special needs that you are special, no. You see, you are going to learn what everybody is learning because at the end of the day, when once you leave the school, once you are out of the classroom, you are going to all battle for the same job. You are all going to fight for the same opportunities. So they learn together in the same, under the same roof. And the other point is that as education are caused learners uh, to be globally inclined by supporting learners to participate in local and global or cross-border art activities. With us here, we have competitions where you find our students competing with students from other countries or our students having an opportunity to go and you know, exhibit in another country. So it actually helps to globalize them, globalize their art and break those boundaries that are dividing our countries. And then we also use a very open syllabus that teach learners about what's happening all over the world. We don't stick to our stories. We also tell other people's stories. Why? Because we want our students not only to be known locally, but to be known elsewhere in the world. And then very importantly, we have, because we have very few institutions that offer art as at higher levels or at tertiary institutions. So we have opportunities through our country, which of course learners the possibility to go and study or further their education across our borders. And then, you know, that's where they actually learn what other people are doing and they become more globally, you know, awakened. 